Today we are trying Boris FX Continuum Complete, also called BCC10. If you're looking for insane effects for your videos, this is the plugin for you. They call it the Swiss Army Knife of plugin and really after trying it for hours, I have to agree it's pretty complete and it covers like so much stuff, even stuff I didn't even know I could do. So I'm super excited. If you want to try it, you can go on their website and get the free trial. I did a review of Sapphire 10 on my channel previously. Boris FX and Sapphire 10 are very similar. I think Sapphire 10 was made by artists. Like the design of the plugin itself is more like a visual thing. So it's easier I find for visual people, like artists, to understand how to use it. As BCC10 was made by programmers that are probably not artists, so the thumbnails are way smaller and it's a little bit harder for people to visualize how it's going to look. But once you get used to that, it really doesn't matter much anymore because the product is just amazing. All right, let's see what we can do with this. I'm gonna go through most categories and I will spend more time on my favorite ones. The first section is 3D objects. You can play with some EPS files, make some 3D text, animate lower thirds. It's not something I'm familiar with, but I feel it was really easy and fun to do. The next section is the art looks. You can use them to add a cartoon effect to your clip or give the impression these are animated drawings. They remind me a little bit of the Photoshop filters. And when you drag and drop them, you'll see it adds a new bin to your effect control section where you can customize everything and browse the presets, either by clicking on the little arrows to change them or by selecting FX Browser. In the FX browser, you can see little thumbnails on your left and when you click on one, then you can play the effect on the bigger screen on your right. And if you like it, then you can press apply and it will affect your clip. And it's the same steps for any effect in this plugin. Next, there's the blur section and it's not like anything I had seen before. It uses Mocha to actually track the subject in your clip and then it adds blur to certain elements if you use motion blur and it looks so cool. You can make it very extreme, so it looks melted and distorted, or you can make it a little bit more subtle. There's also directional blurs that allows you to create like double vision or triple vision. It's like super trippy. <laughs> you can get more realistic blurs using the fast lens blur, and it creates some very nice bouquet sometimes, depending on your clip. The Gaussian blur, which I use a lot, lens shape, pyramid blur. You can make super fun shapes if you use the radial blur and the spiral blur. They are very special. The next tool is the FX browser and this browser is different from the one we saw before. It's actually the only thing I think needs improvement from BCC10 because when you launch it, you can browse all the effects and visualize what it will do on your clip. And then if you like it, there's no apply button, so you cannot press apply. The only option you have is to close it and then you would have to relocate the effect you liked in all the plugin sections. That's just an extra step and it's kind of a waste of time. Fortunately, there is a different effects browser in each section of the plugin in your effect controls that allows you to apply the effect when you like one. The next section is color and tone, which gives you all the tools you need to make a great color correction. The effects are easy to customize with a lot of precise options. My most favorite is the multi-tone mix. The presets are completely insane. I love the colors and when you have a lot of textures in your clip, it looks super aesthetic and almost metallic. I think it's one of the most creative tools from the plugin and I really enjoy it. Then we have the film style. It allows you to either deinterlace a clip or you can add some film glow, different film process, vignetting, color vignettes or even blurred vignettes, two strip colors and you can add some grain or even match grain from other clips. And it's all tools you'll use on many of your edits. I know I use them on even wedding videos so it's very versatile. Next is image restoration. You get the beauty studio, which allows you to enhance the skin. So I'm just going to show you. So right away you see that it smoothens all the skin and it's really fast to detect it. You can select how intense you want the smoothing to be. Then you can fix your DV clips with DV fixer. There's a dropout fixer, dust and scratches fixer, so it would remove them from your old clips and restore the image, flicker fixer, lens correction, magic sharp, and a bunch of others. All tools that can help you improve the visual quality of older clips. It doesn't always work for very, very damaged clip, but I see improvement. Next, you get a lot of tools to key out your green or blue screen. And you get a lot of options to isolate your subject and add the background of your choice after. My favorite is the two-way key. I like how it makes like a trippy cutout of some parts of the image when you don't really use it to key the background. 
and I think it looks super fun. Up next we get a ton of lights option. Edge lightning, glare, glint, glitter, laser beam, lens flare 3D, light leaks, light sweep, lightning, rays cartoon, which is so insane, rays puffy, radiant edges, radiant spotlight, rays rain, rays ripley, rays streaky, rays textured, rays wedge, reverse spotlight, spotlight, and stage light. And remember that for every effect you choose, there's a bunch of different presets to choose after. You will for sure find the light you need there. Then I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit faster. There's the match move where you can do corner pin, match the move and do witness prediction. In the next section, there's the obsolete one. But there's some that I would still use like, okay, maybe that's like super cringy, but I kind of like this effect. <laughs> It's very tug life. If you go in the FX browser, you have different type of more than legit fire. But the 90s are back and you see more and more design like that. So, And another one that I kind of like a lot is the light zoom. I think it really works well with dancers. So there's still some gems in the obsolete section if you want to play with them. There's also an old section for particles, 2D particles, comets, organic strands. Like It looks really good. Particle Arrays 3D, Particle Emitter 3D, Particle System, Pin Art 3D, Rain, Snow, Sparks, Wild Cards. Obviously you need to tweak them, but the presets are already pretty cool. Then you get the Perspective section. If you want to create an image shatter, cube, cylinder, page turn, stuff that you might not use often, but it's good to have. Up next, there's the Stylize section. You get the Color Choker, Colorized Glow. Damage TV, Edge Grunge, Emboss, Grunge, LED, Misalignment, Mosaic, Multi Shadow, Prism, which is one of my favorite, RGB Edges, RGB Pixel Noise, Scanline, Scatterize, and Video Glitch. The next section is all about textures. You get Brick, Caustics, Clot, Clouds, Fractal Noise, and a bunch more. You just have to drag and drop it either on a clip or on a solid, and it will immediately affect your clip. So let's say that I want the brick here, you can go in the FX browser and then there's a lot more options. It's also customizable. Now onto the time section. So you get jitter and you can even play with colors and it gets super trippy. Jitter basic, looper, optical flow, posterized time, temporal blur, which I love so much, time displacement, your subject turns into liquid, trails, Trails Basic and Velocity Remap, which slows your clip and it plays in slow motion. Let's try now the transitions and I really like some of them so much because they are very like 90s kind of. <laughs> there's two sections of transitions. There's one in the FX section and there's one in the transition section and the difference is that instead of adding the transition in between here, then it adds it throughout the clip. So it makes a longer transition like that. I want to show you the other section because that's the one I like to use the most. And then you get two sections, the obsolete one with film glow dissolve and lens transition. Now let's go to the official transition section. So you see it's the same effect we just saw, but you can control exactly where it happens. All right, let me give you a tour of all the transitions real fast. If you thought that was a lot of transitions, it does not end there. When you choose one, you just have to click on it and then you can tweak it and you can also go in the effect browser 
and each transition has a bunch of different presets. <laughs> they are so much fun and they are a lot more eccentric and exciting compared to the ones you find in Premiere. Okay, we're now on to the last section of this plugin. This section is called Warp. So you get Bulge. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's quite intense. The proportions are so weird. <laughs> displacement map. Vector displacement is just insane. I love it so much. Ripple. Turbulence. I love the ripples and like the weird texture. Twirl. Vector displacement and a wave. <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> There's also a few tools to help you morph your images together or your video clips, such as VCC Morph, Video Morph. You can also use Warp in After Effects, so those three work in After Effects only. I had so much fun playing with BCC10, I think it's a very complete plugin and it's so huge that even after hours I didn't even try everything in it. I think it would be great for serious editors who likes to have a lot of options. I see that for Adobe, like for a full one, it turns around $995 US. Don't forget to check out the trial version if you want to just try all the stuff and I'm sure you'll be inspired by it because it's very exciting. Thanks a lot for watching this video. If you liked it, please leave a like and a comment on which effect you like the most. My name is Eva Landry and I'll see you soon in another video. Bye bye!